Welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. Give me one sec. Thank you, guys. Sorry about that. Welcome back to the Boxing Bookie. We are back. We are back. It is good to be back. Uh, we got a good one for you today. We're going to get into a great fight. A fight I think could be fight of the year type action between Ray Vargas and Nick Bout, the WBC uh, featherweight world title. Um, really intriguing fight. Really interesting fight. All right, before we get into that, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Bookie on all forms of social media 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. The Boxing Bookie is 14 and 3 over the last four weeks. It's absolutely unbelievable what we've been able to do the last four weeks. Uh, but this is what we do it's, it's, it's normal, it's consistent. I show you how to make money. The odds makers, the bookies, they don't know what they're doing, they don't know how to handicap a fight. I do. I'm going to show you how to consistently make money betting on the sport of boxing. I don't gamble, but if you do, I always use DraftKings. You can't even use DraftKings in te Texas. Um, but if if you do gamble, I'm going to show you how to bring down the house. There's always a bull market somewhere. There's always money to be made every single week, and I'm going to show you how to do it. Join the Patreon. The link is in the description. The Patreon just follows a month to get the lock of the week, which we, we're we killing it on. Uh, the lock of the week, you know, it's five dollars a month to get the lock of the week every week in which you're making money. Lock of the week is insane. Um, you're going to make money. It's just five dollars to get it. Plus, you can ask me to handicap any fight you want, so you can make money on that as well. Plus, you get a free T-shirt. There's a ton of perks. Five dollars a month. Join the Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, uh, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to autism research and recovery. So, like I said, we've absolutely been killing it. We've, we've been dominating um, betting, and we're going to keep doing that. And, and this fight, Ray Vargas versus... Um, Nick Ball is a really, really intriguing fight. Um, but I, I think it, it, it's – it's we can make it safe. It's, it's a dangerous fight to bet, but I think there's ways that we can safely make money on it. Ray Vargas is someone, obviously, we're, we're extremely familiar with. We've seen him come up from 22, 26, 30, now back 26. I think 26 is probably his best weight. Movement befuddles him. He doesn't like movement. Now, Ball's not really a mover, but if you move, you can really bother Ray Vargas. He likes to come forward, but he can't fight backwards. I'm going to see him fighting backwards. Now, keep this in mind. I think he's going to be going back a lot in this fight. He can do it, but it's not a, it's not his ace number one strength. It's his bait. So, Ball is going to put him in a position where he's, he's fighting not his best style. I, I want you to keep that in mind because this is a very close fight. Not good at cutting the ring off. Again, he's not going to have to really do that with Ball. Ball's going to be right at him. What I do like about Vargas is he has he has a really good stick. When he uses his jab, it's long, it's hard, he, and then he throws off, cut rights off of it. It's good. He throws crisp, clean shots off of it. He's got a really good stick. He does get a little wild and frustrated. You can say that. See, he misses shots by a mile. Like You'll see him throw air balls, right, like air ball shots. It's really interesting, uh, especially when Ball's going to consistently try to get on the inside. He uses, he throws these wide shots to keep you off of him, and we're going to get the ball. The ball's so short that I think that's actually an advantage for Ball. The one thing you're going to notice about Ray Vargas is he's, he's not slow. He's got quick reflexes. He's pretty quick. When he keeps his jab out pumping and he fires off shots, he can really keep you at bay. When he can keep you at bay, he can have his way with you. This is going to be a battle of the jabs, right? What this is going to come down to is can Vargas keep Ball at bay with his jab? Ball's five foot two. Uh, if not, can Ball get on the inside? If Ball can get on the inside, fights over also. Then it just becomes a matter of can Ball stop him? I don't think Ball can stop him. Ball is good at slipping on the inside. I I, I don't think the wild. Crap that Vargas throws is going to keep Bay Ball at bay. I think Ball's going to be able to get in the inside quite a bit. Vargas is the bigger hitter. He lands clean power shots. He throws a lot of things hard, man. He throws it hard, and it, it makes getting inside on him difficult, which is going to make Ball's life difficult. But can he overcome that? And that's really going to be the question. One thing about Vargas is he stands in the pocket and he's able to be hit. But again, I, 
his reach advantage is so great over ball. I don't think, you know, even if he stands in the pocket, ball's not going to be able to reach him. That's a big advantage for Vargas. So th- th- there's a lot to this fight. There's a lot of ways this fight can go, which is why it makes betting on it difficult. And I'm going to I'm gonna get to that in just a minute. The other thing Vargas does, like I said, he's, he's, he's pretty quick. His reflexes are pretty He dodges shots pretty well for a, a, a tall guy. He's better athletically and more nimble than, than he, you probably give him credit for. He can win rounds with his volume. Now, Ball's a volume guy too, so it's going to be interesting. But both these guys can win rounds with their volume. This is why this is going to be, I think, a great classic fight. Ball's 19-0 with 11 knockouts. I think his power is a little better than that suggests. Um, we, we saw a ball get a vicious knockout and look it, with uh two fights ago, less than a year ago, against Lamadi, and it looked like Lamadi had died, like it was that brutal of a knockout. He's a volume fighter, he's a pressure fighter, he's a he's five foot two, he uses his shortness to his advantage, he, he bends down, he crouches, he makes himself even smaller. It didn't look like this in that dog bay fight because dog bay is five four, but it's really difficult to hit him if he can work his jab. And he gets lazy, and he loves his power a little too much. His power is decent. I think it's pretty good, actually. But it's not all-world power. It's just pretty good. Um, he relies on it too much. He, and he lunges in at times. If he can clean up that sloppy stuff, and he can just keep pumping that jab, I think he can get his way in. And when he does, he's vicious on the inside. He keeps pouring in shots. He just unleashes a whirlwind of shots. He's constantly swarming. He can also switch to South Pole, which I advise him to stay away from. He said he lines up for the right hand of Vargas, but he can do it. When Ball's constantly throwing, he's just he's too much to deal with. Like I was talking to a friend today about Ball fighting Raymond Ford next if Ball wins this fight, and I think Ball beats the brakes off of Ford. Um, you know, Ball's also quick and accurate. He's accurate with the counter right hand. He's accurate with the counter left hook. The lead left hook too. He's really good with the lead left hook. He measures distance. He knows when he can hit you and when he's too far away, right? It's just like a, the, the little guy that always played basketball uh, against taller guys. He's got like little little floaters, you know, little things like that because he's used to being the shorter guy. Ball's got that in his repertoire. I said, if he can stay away from reaching runs, if he can stay disciplined, if he can jab his way in, he can slip and slide his way in, Vargas is going to give him opportunities. I think Ball can win this fight on points, but it's very difficult. So let's look at how we're going to make money on this fight. rid of that. Still got the Joshua up. So we're going to take a half a bet on, on Nick Ball to win this fight. I don't think Nick Ball winning this fight is the best bet. I think he's going to win. If I had to bet, I'm taking Ball, but it's a very close fight. So I'm only going to put half a bet. So a $50 bet in this case makes you twenty-seven seventy-seven. The fight to go the distance, I really like. I think this fight's going the distance. That pays the best odds. Minus two thirty, that pay uh, that pays you a hundred dollar bet, forty three dollars. So we're up to over eighty dollars on that bet. I'm sorry, over seventy dollars, and then over ten and a half. Let's just throw that in too. Uh, it obviously goes over ten and a half. I think that's thirty two fifty. So we're at thirty two fifty. That's seventy five. We're at over a hundred dollars on a two hundred fifty dollar bet. Um, it, it, it's hedged. This is what I like. Uh, I like the fight to go the distance. But we're going to head that a little bit with just for it to go over 10 and a half. The odds aren't that bad for just over 10 and a half. So we're going to go over 10 and a half. We're going to go the distance. I really like this fight to go the distance. I, I don't think either guy's getting knocked out. And then I'm making a smaller bet, just like I did last week on Ford, on Nick Bull to win. That's half a bet. So that's going to make you 2777. Uh the $100 bet on the one times bet is going to make you a hundred bucks. Uh, it's going to make you forty three bucks at seventy, and then this bet is going to make you thirty two twenty five. So you're up over a hundred dollars on a two hundred fifty dollar bet. So we're going to make half a bet on Nick Bull on the money line, and then we're going to take two prop bets over ten and a half, and, and to go the distance hundred each. If you just want to bet for it to go the distance, if you're a little bit more of a gambler and you just want to do this, I ain't mad about it. I ain't mad about it. Or if you're less of a gambler and you want to do this, 
I ain't mad about that either. But we're going to do this. We got ourselves nicely hedged on this bet. I, I like this. I think this is a good bet. I think in our parlay, we're going to have some of this in our lock of the week. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow the Boxing Book Game on all forms of social media. The Boxing Book Game you for every single fight, major fight, showing how to bring down the house consistently, make money betting on the sport of boxing. Uh, join the Patreon. The link is in the description. The link to join the Patreon is in the description. Uh, five dollars a month gets you the lock of the week that we talked about, which is easy money. The five dollars a month it doesn't cost you money; it makes you money. You can ask me anything, ask me to handicap a fight, I'll handicap it for you. Get a free t-shirt as well as, as a ton of other perks. That's just five dollars to join the Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. That is Texas Boxing Scene. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is March 5th, 2024. From Texas to the world, thank you. And Don't miss a tweet.